Welcome to the channel, folks. Clunkers and Classics, where I got four new helpers. Although they're not going to be much help, they're just little. But hopefully they'll help keep the mice away. Okay, we are rolling along on the uh, 68 Chevelle Nomad Wagon. Still got a, a lot to go on it. But this episode, we're going to start off by putting the 12 bolt in there. We got it all cleaned up. Put some poor 15 on. It's not perfect. I missed a few spots, but I had to change the uh, yoke on it because a thing, uh, an end of it had been busted off on the old one. So it's filled with new fluid, cleaned up. I know it would be a good time to take it all apart and put in new bearings and seals and all that stuff, but uh, I don't want, really want to go through all that. Uh, it's just a uh, um, non posy so later on, possibly, I'll do a posy. get some posy gears for it. So, if these cats can get out of my way... Uh, I'm going to take this 10 bolt out of there and if you're new the 10 bolt the uh, uh, crawl over here show you. this pin right here is all loose See it? it's about to blow apart kitty what are you watching okay so um, I'm going to try to save these brake lines, the ones on the 12 bolt came off, so I'm going to loosen them, bend these tabs back, try to save the brake lines. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, I don't have the, the bend tools and the flaring tools and everything to make new ones. I mean, I, I'd buy them if I uh, really thought I need them, but this came off the 12 bolt. And if I can get it off without damaging it off the 10 bolt, let's put it up here and leave it. So that's the first thing. I'm going to take them off and then pretty much take off this bolt and nut. This bolt and nut. And the two on the other side and then the two shock bolts and drop her down. Uh, emergency brake cables I don't believe are hooked up. Or are they in that? Oh, they might be. Yeah, they're in a hole up there. I got to take a, take the pin off, pull them emergency brake cables through the holes. Um. So yeah. So let me get this started. I'll see how much of it I can record. I may put some of it on fast motion, and uh, someone's right in my back. This little guy. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? You looking for mice? <laughs> he was digging into my back. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, these kittens are going to be running around getting into trouble. Okay, so, uh, oh, and uh, I think once I get this out, I'm going to clean up as much as I can through all this most of this is it's rust surface rust but it's a lot of caked on dirt so I'm gonna just take something to uh, a little bit stronger than a scotch brush just some old old 80 grit or something and uh, clean all that up and probably pour 15 all that and then we'll put in the 12 bolt after that so I don't know I'm, I might record some of it here and uh, in the uh, fast motion type thing but okay so I'll be back kitty caught a snake she's carrying it over here and just stop you gonna go feed your kitties with that
Kitty's been chowing down on that snake. I guess she couldn't wait for her hot dog. I don't know why the little kitties haven't come over. Anyway, uh, all the bolts came off pretty easy. I should be able to just lower that down and the springs will fall out. Just like that. And I think that's it. Just slide her out. Okay, let me get that out of the way. And then, uh, like I said, I'm going to get under there, clean all that up, blow out everything, and uh, probably put some Pour 15 up there. So I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got the uh, little cowl weather strip in, put that on, and the little three piece uh, grill cowl moldings. Um, this is supposed to have a little clip here, but anyway, I put this deal in. I'll show you the old one. I get a, I'm gonna paint this pour 15 when I do the back. But yeah, this is a little vacuum uh, deal that opens a flapper. But you can see this one here is all eaten by rats. This is the one that was on there. One, one that's in there now is off of, of the parts car. So, uh. And then that's a little bracket that goes. So, yeah, that had a well, I've seen a little clip somewhere. Anyway, get that done. And uh, I was under here yesterday cleaning this area here where the rear end was just scuffing it down with some 80 grit I'm gonna try to clean it up a little bit more and then just uh, just paint it with pour 15 I mean I can't you know be nice to have the frame off and have it all sandblasted and everything but I think it'll be all right and I'm not going to replace any of these bushings or anything, at least for not right now. Uh, they don't look that bad. See them here. Uh, I know a guy who's on YouTube and he bought a cheap set of upper and lower trailing arms for his Mustang. And... They lasted about 50 miles, and these bushings here turned to mush. So I'm a little bit leery on, uh, I have to make sure I get the good ones whenever I do, you know, like the front suspension. Like I said, these rear, I'm just going to leave them like that if I have a problem. I may, I may have to get the uh, adjustable upper trailing arms so I can get the pitch right on the rear end I may have to I ended up have to doing that to the Chevelle I don't know why but it was tilted like way down so I had to get them adjustables to bring it up whether this one will be the same thing I don't know but anyway mainly want to get it all painted up in here where the coil goes and everything and I may leave some of it to to uh, it's a dirty job trying to get that stuff and it's all dropping down in your face and everything and so it'll probably be a half-assed job, but anyway, I'm gonna clean this up, paint it up best I can, and then we'll uh, we'll get the rear end. It's right there. We'll get that ready to put in there. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, guys. Got it all painted up there with pour 15. Just that area. I still got the whole 
floor to do. I'm going to do some little spot welds on the bottom of that floor later on. Paint all that. But anyway, we got this little area here for the rear end. Pop! And, uh, fixing to put it in. Rear end over there. Fixing to get it on the jack stand and get it up in there. Uh, I probably won't hook up these brake lines yet because the uh, master cylinder is just full of crap. And uh, I don't know if I lift the lid off or not. Well, the back one is empty. Where it is here. Back one's empty, and then look at the front one. So I don't want to push all that fluid through there. Um, and I want to do power brakes, so um, I'll have to do something. And I want to push the fluid and make sure them lines are all cleared out. So anyway, I'm going to leave them loose and we can probably put on the, uh, oh here comes the cats, put on the uh, wheel cylinders and brake shoes and everything after I got it mounted in there. But anyway, I'll be back. Oh, uh, these are little cans of uh, Pour 15 I bought, about a little six pack. That way, you know, if you have like a quart and you have stuff left over, it'll harden up in there unless you, it's just kind of a pain in the ass. And then this is a little uh, toothbrush looking thing, but it's uh, uh wire like a wire brush but a toothbrush that's what i got up there and cleaned all that stuff with there yesterday took took quite a while okay so anyway i'll be back okay guys i got her bolted in got the coal springs upper trailing arm lower trailing arm and the shocks on there uh like i said i'm just gonna leave these brake lines loose Go ahead and put the uh, wheel cylinder and all the brake pads on. I got those new brake pads and I'll be using the old uh, springs and everything from the uh, from the 10 bolt rear end over there. Everything looks pretty good on there. So I'm going to do that. Oh, and hook up the uh, emergency brake. Uh, I forget where they went. Under... under. Well, whatever, they go on that bracket behind that trailing arm. I'll get those little clips back in there. Uh, so just for a note, this one, this car was originally a 307, had the 10 bolt. My 69 Chevelle over there underneath the carport, that was originally a 307, and it had a 10 bolt. And the parts car I got this 12 bolt off of was originally a 350. So not saying all 307s have 10 bolts and all 350s have 12 bolts, but because uh, you know you get special order or anything. But that's what it seems like. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with 10 bolts. I mean, if you've been following Vice Grip Garage, he has that uh, independent Chevelle. And, uh, you know, he's got, I don't know what he's got in it now. He originally started with a 454 and all souped up. It's a, basically a burnout car. I don't know, it's, has he got a thousand horsepower or 2000 horsepower in it now? And he's still got the original 10 bolt in it. And he put the uh, little spool in there to, you know, make it a redneck posse. But uh, it still hasn't blown up. He was—he just did a big old long burnout and blew all the tires and everything. And he always does a little prayer for the ten bolt. So I don't have no problems with ten bolts, but uh, I don't know what happened to that one. Obviously, this one had been—you know—it was painted purple, and uh, they pulled the motor and transmission out of it. It's the only reason they parked it. Well, probably because the rear end was going out too, but the engine was worth pulling out so they probably had a hopped up motor in this thing and uh, whether that had something to do with wearing that 10 bolt out or not I don't know so anyway you know 
Well, it's probably in a wives tale that a 12 bolt's better than a 10 bolt but anyway we got a 12 bolt in there uh you know it should be common sense as it's more a heavy duty rear end than a 10 bolt so um and like i said later on we're gonna do the put the real posi in there not just a spool because i don't like the tire squealing every time i turn a corner so i'll go ahead and do the by the and figure out what gears you want to I want to put in I don't even know what transmission I'm gonna put in it I'd like to put in a Tremec six-speed if I could with like a you know a 411 rear end or something in it uh, something good for the drag strip and you can cruise on the highway in six gear and still get you know 20 miles to the gallon or something but who knows all that'll come together later so we got a 12 bolt in there and uh, we'll do the rest later. Put a posi, uh, do all the wheel bearings and bushings and probably put the adjustable trailing arms up there. You know, probably need them for racing anyway. And uh, okay, so right now I'm gonna be put on the uh, new wheel cylinders and brake pads. So I'll be back. Okay guys, I got this uh, this side here done. Took all the stuff off the old rear end. New brake pads, new wheel cylinder. And of course I had these uh, drums resurfaced at O'Reilly's, got ripped off. Okay, these are the old pads that were on the 10 volt. Not bad, but they got some heat, heat cracks in them. I'll save them for ah, who knows okay so we're gonna take uh, gonna take the drums off this side here I'll show you set you up a little bit puppy yeah uh, I shampoo her with flea and tick stuff. I put flea coll new flea collars on her and spray her and she still itches. So, and what she does, she's not doing it now, she usually does. So I just sprayed her down with some uh, flea killer stuff. And she, every time she itches, she whines like she's being beaten to death or something. So if you hear that in the background, that's, that's what dogs do. Dogs itch, no matter what. So, okay, so let me take this off and I'll show you real quick. You have two tools here. You have this one here that takes off the spring. That's one. Two, and you take up and this little tool here takes up these two springs here I got little pins in the back and just spin it around till it pops off that's it there it's been little pin goes through the back goes through there and then clips into that and what you're doing is you're twisting that clips on like that you're twisting it so it comes off okay same with this side there's that one and you take off all your Kind of pull it all. This is your this is your emergency brake here. Just pull that. That hooks on your emergency brake cable. Okay. That piece in your little. And that's it. You just put it all 
kind of clean it all up, put it all back on the new one. And like I said, I got new wheel cylinders so we don't have to take them off. Okay, I'll be back. Okay guys, that's this side done. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna fix, fixing to put the tires on it. Then that'll be it for the rear end for a while. We still need to get up there and uh, pour 15 all the rest of the frame, paint the bottom of the box and all that, but it's, you know, 90% done for now. We'll move on to something else. I'll be back. Okay, guys. I got her back on the ground and uh, tires on it. So I finished that uh, job up. Got the 12 bolt in there and new brakes on it. Uh, I think we're going to start on the uh, sunroof next episode. Okay, so uh, like, comment, share, all that stuff. Subscribe. Uh, I also got uh, bumper stickers for sale if you want to help out the channel. Five bucks. I'll put, I'll put it in the description. Uh, PayPal at uh, Clunkers and Classics at gmail.com. Okay, so uh, I guess that's it for this episode. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. And we'll see you next one.